This webinar is proudly brought to you by IG South Africa. Visit igmarkets.co.za to open your trading account today. Afternoon, ladies and gents. Uh, Simon Brown here. Doing an introduction for Warren Peacock. He's doing trending versus trading markets. Seems like a simple topic, but from my sense around it, massively important. As always, uh, Warren will do a presentation. We've got time for questions thereafter. And of course, we are recording. Let me just check. If you're hearing audio, if you're seeing pictures on your screen, why don't you raise your hand in the GoToWebinar application? Brilliant. Hands are plenty. Okay, we're winning. Warren, over to you. Awesome. Thank you, Simon. Welcome, everyone. Uh, today, we're going to have a look at trending markets and trading markets uh, and the major difference between the two of them. Uh, this is just a picture of a trending market. Uh, there are not too many instruments that trend like this, but that is an extreme example of what a trending market looks like. And you can see since 2012, basically, uh, coronation has been straight up the, straight up the chart. A trading market looks something like that, uh, and I've included a variation later on. And we can just see that, you know, the market's got big swings, and sometimes within those swings there are smaller swings, and it's just very difficult to to buy it in 2011 and still be holding it in 2014. You wouldn't have made a lot of money. So trading markets and trending markets require different, uh, different systems to trade. Uh, today we're just looking at the difference between the two, and one of the simple ways to identify a trending or a trading market, uh, those of you that know me by now know 2189 exponential moving averages is what I apply to all my charts. Uh, yeah, from gold to natural gas to currencies, everything on a daily chart and a weekly chart is done with the 2189 uh, exponential moving averages. For the share side, when you measure the returns of the moving average crossover system, so 21 crosses above the 9, we buy. When the 21 crosses below the 89, we sell. That result can give you an idea as to whether it's trending or trading. And we can have a look there. Coronation had one trade, made 74 Rand a share. So if you bought it at the last crossover and we're still holding it today, uh, you'd be up 74 Rand a share. Capitec, on the other hand, you've had six trades and you would have lost a total of 41 Rand a share. So obviously, moving average crossover, uh, sorry, 21 and 89 exponential moving average crossover is not working on Capitec. For me, that makes it a trading type share, uh, and Coronation is a trending share. They are extreme examples, but uh, whenever a market goes into a trading scenario, you don't want to be trading moving average crossovers. All right, so it's one thing that's simple enough to identify a trend in hindsight, uh, here I've put up Anglo Gold, and I thought I'd just include uh, an idea as to when the trend might be changing. So we can see Anglo Gold trending down, uh, and as it gets down to the bottom, let me just put up a pin here. As it gets down to the bottom, uh, we can see that it's continuously making lower lows, and it's making lower highs all the way through. And then it pops up above resistance, makes a higher high. That is the first warning that we could be in for a trend change. All right, so first warning, I get a higher high in a downtrend, higher high. And the second warning or the confirmation is I get a second higher high. We can see it's broken resistance, second higher high. And I haven't had a lower low. So that low is higher than the previous low. I've got two higher highs, and the moving averages have crossed over. So 21's crossed above the 89. Anglo Gold has gone from downtrending to uptrending. Whether you apply that as a you know as a trading signal would be up to you. At the end of the day, we've been shorting Anglo Gold all the way through that downtrend. This was a an indication that I should no longer be shorting Anglo Gold. All right, so. Trends will change. Obviously, they can change in different ways, but this is one of the warnings. If it was an uptrending share, the first warning could be a lower high, a lower low, and the 21 crosses below the 89. Uh, sometimes the chart pattern can warn of a consolidation. Now, the, the idea is the trend doesn't have to change for the stock to no longer be a trending item. 
uh, or whatever instrument you're trading. Uh, this is the J200 for instance. The first warning in this case was a double top confirmed by a bearish engulfing candle. Uh, we can see it right on the end there. Bearish engulfing candle gives us a nice double top. Everybody wants to go short. Uh, that's not necessarily the right way to approach it, but certainly I'm going to be careful making any long trades. The trend is still strongly up. The 21 is above the 89. I just didn't put it on the chart for clarity. The double top certainly warns me that this could be at least a consolidation, if not a trend reversal. So the first warning was the double top. Oops, sorry. First warning, double top, bearish engulfing candle. Now, if you were long, you could start pairing your position. So you start closing some of it. Uh, you can hold the balance until the averages cross over. The confirmation comes when the support line holds. Remember, we don't want the lower lows. This support level held quite strongly. That warns of consolidation rather than a trend change. And we can see up to that shooting star, the J200 stayed well within a range, and the range actually tightened down to those two levels. Now, we knew already here that we should be careful. At this point, we have confirmed that we need to be careful. So if you were still in the trade, you'd be holding. Trend hasn't changed. We can see the 21 is still well above the 89. All right, so the trend is still up, but the market is definitely in consolidation. So we'd be waiting. The idea would be now a break below support, and the 21 crossing below the 89 would give me a change in trend. All right, so if that lower level breaks, then we have a change in trend. If it breaks at the same time that the average is crossed over, we have a confirmed change in trend. Uh, just remember there's a difference between indices, currencies, and shares. Indices can have a trend change, but you might not be able to make money out of it. Uh, so if we go short on the J200 or on the Aussie, you go short on the Aussie on a daily chart, you're going to do it with a really small number of contracts. Uh, just because going short in the index is always you know, a little bit more risky than going long. All right, so we're looking for a support line break or a resistance level break. So if it breaks above the double top, the trend is going to continue higher. Uh, now we are going to, over the next couple of months, uh, Simon and I will be doing some trading systems based on both ideas, trending and trading, so I'm not going to cover too much when it comes to entry and exit signals. All right, so consolidation, good warning that we've got to be careful. This is a trading market that's uh, Brent crude. Now, it's easy in hindsight. We can see that the market is consolidating. We can see that the two white lines, uh, the two white lines have narrowed the range down. So this would be a range-bound market, but it's not a great range because we've got lower highs over there, and we've certainly got higher lows going that way. But the, the inside range is pretty tight. The other thing to note is where the 21 and the 89 cross, we're not going to make any money. So we can see that there's no trend. All right, so we don't want to be trading moving average crossovers if there's no trend, and we can see all the signals there. Long and short, you would have lost money. Break above or below support could give you a trade or it could warn of a change in trend. Uh, if you are a trend trader, you're going to stay away from a market like this until the support or resistance levels break, and then you're going to wait for the trend to confirm. Now, this is, uh, I found this chart quite interesting. Uh, this is the Euro dollar daily, and we can see the 2189 crossover didn't make any money on the left hand side of the chart. You can see the crosses there, long, short, long, short, long, short. They really didn't make any money. We did have a double bottom, all right, and then the 2189 started to work, so we had the double bottom confirmed there. 21 crosses above the 89, goes up. So if we were a trend trader, we'd be looking at the chart pattern plus the two moving averages. Take the trade, and lo and behold, we start getting swings within a trend. So the market is trending up, and we can see the 21 stayed above the 89 for quite some time. 
but these swings are going to knock you out. So any trailing stop that you would have had would have been taken out whether you using previous support lines or whatever. Your stop losses would have been taken. You wouldn't have held all the way through the trend. So you can have a trading or a swinging market that is trending up or down. All right, so just be aware that if you do get stopped out on the trend, you get stopped out once or twice, uh, have a careful look at that chart and make sure that it isn't a swinging market that just happens to be going higher or lower. The other question I get quite a lot is trend lines. Uh, all I did, I don't use trend lines for trading purposes. I think uh, they're great in hindsight, but for actual prediction purposes or probabilities, they're pretty useless in my, in my view. Uh, what I do see, those two trend lines warn me that momentum is changing. Okay, so you just have a look there. We can see the tops are starting to lean over a little bit. Uh, sort of like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So that is a warning. Once that warning came through, we had the two trend lines telling me that this trend is coming off. The, or the momentum is reducing. It's not necessarily the trend is going to change. The 2189 crossed over there. We can see the whole time, instead of trend lines, I just had a, a 200 EMA. And the reason I use 200 is pretty much most of the world, even the, the fundamental guys, have a 200 EMA. And it's quite an important dynamic trend line. So it's changing every time the market price moves. And we can see the, the 200 held the market up quite nicely a number of times. When the 21 broke through the 89 and price then confirmed by breaking the 200, that was a definite change in trend. Now, I, look, I'm, I'm mostly a technical analyst, but I do watch the news. Uh, I do look at fundamentals. I just don't study them and I don't sort of pick my trades based on fundamentals. When the euro started changing and the 21 it breaks 89 and the 200 is broken, the news at the time was droggy. So he was changing the whole ECB rates. Uh, the rates were negative, and that just accelerated the trend. So it is a good idea to sort of keep an eye on the news that if your signal does come, you have a little bit more confidence in the signal. All right, and once this chart broke out of that channel, uh, you can see what happened. The euro fell and is still falling uh, quite a distance. So a combination of some basic fundamentals or news driven, but you know, ECB changing their rates to negative, that's going to knock the euro. Nobody wants to, to buy euros if they're not going to make any money on it. All right, but the technical side warned us long in advance with those lowering trend lines, momentum is changing. The 2189 triggers a trade, the 200 is broken, confirms the trade, and then we just got to wait. All right, so you can have a trading market within the trend that you can just leave alone. Uh, maybe one or two trades, and then you figure that this thing's not working. You leave it alone. When it changes, you've got to be there to make the trade. All right, so I don't really have favorites. Um, I just look at the whole market, and I try and find good trading opportunities, and I enjoy the trending side of it. You have to understand the trading side just simply so that you can stay out if you're a trend trader. If you're a, someone who likes the swings, then you've got to stay out. When the market is trending, you don't be going long against that trend all the time. A decision that you have to make. Both types of market are tradable. You can make money on most markets. The only time you can't make money is if there's almost zero movement. Okay. Both types of markets are tradable. The decision you have to make is which one do you prefer? Master that style of trading before moving on to the next style. So become a trend. If you decide the trend is your thing, learn to trade the trend. Once you've mastered that, and it, it shouldn't take you more than half your life, you can then start looking at trading markets. Eventually, you can learn to trade both types. You can trade the trends, and you can be a swing trader. The trick is knowing when the market is changing from one to the other and back again. Markets are not stagnant. Shares are not stagnant. They change all the time. The news changes them. The market, the environment changes them. Economics changes them. You have to be able to identify when that trend is changing and when something goes from a trending instrument to a trading type instrument. Uh, Anglo Gold is probably a, a decent example at the current moment of a downward trending stock that has become a bit of a swing trader 
uh, on the upside and then it's broken down again. So it's become a bit of a swinger. Now being able to identify that is really important. If you can do that consistently, you can stay out of something you don't understand or you can become uh, uh, yeah, trading both types of market. Uh, just some observations from my side. In the first few years I found it difficult to decide what type of trader I was. I'd move from one market to the other without even knowing whether it was a trending or a trading market. Now, that yeah, we call it bad habits when we're going short at the bottom and long at the tops, or we're not holding our winners, uh, we you know, letting the losers run. All that kind of stuff is normally because we haven't identified what type of market we're in. So when I figured out that I didn't know the difference between trending and trading, and started to define the two, the bad habits suddenly can be corrected because I don't need to be going short on a strong upward trending correlation. I can just go long or leave it alone. In reality, it is more a case of ignorance than discipline. You cannot exercise discipline if you do not know what type of market you're in and how you should be trading it. So it's very easy to say, you know, you read a book and they talk about discipline uh, and they talk about these bad habits. The, the whole idea normally is because you haven't recognized what you're supposed to be doing. So if you can find a set of rules that tell you that uh, you know, this is a trending market, I should only be going in one direction. I shouldn't be going short in an uptrender and I certainly shouldn't be going long in a downtrending market because I'm not trying to pick the ultimate turning points. Okay, Swing trading is also not about picking ultimate turning points. Swing trading is about trading that range. So it's not the ultimate turning point, you know, to get the best price on the day is virtually impossible. Somebody gets it, but normally by accident. So the idea is that if I can just get a direction, whether the market is generally sideways, uh, if we take that uh, J200 chart for instance, there was nowhere really on that daily chart that you could place a trade. Because it wasn't really going to the extremes, and then the range narrowed down so much that you couldn't make uh, you couldn't make money trading the really small volatility. So to recognize the difference between volatility, a range, and a swinging market is really important. So that J200 chart, that was a tight range. The uh, Brent crude, that was a swinging market where it was defined swings. You could measure them. Once you can measure it, you can start to trade it. All right, so the idea is go sit down, look at some of your historical trades, uh, just try the 2189, you know, stick it on the chart and check where, where you were going short. NuspaS is a, is a really good example as well. Uh, a lot of people have been short in NuspaS and if you look at the chart, it's a strongly trending stock. Uh, you, don't, you don't want to be taking those kind of risks with full positions. I mean, obviously, if you want to do a little bit of uh, gambling on the side, you can go against the trend, but you certainly don't put full positions in. All right, so have a look at some of your historical trades, check the trends, and see whether that was part of the problem. Uh, if it wasn't part of the problem, well, you're welcome to get hold of me and I'll have a look at your stuff. Um, and as always, you are welcome to contact me if you have any questions about the presentation. The trend is your friend until it bends, and if you stick to that, you're going to stay out of trouble. So thank you, guys. Thank you, Simon. Thanks, Warren. Uh, folks, pop your questions in the Q&A box. A couple coming through. Uh, question, Warren, what about ADX, which, is, as an indicator, gives not direction, but tells you if you have a strong trend, and you could have a line in the sand and say, above X, we're trending, below X, we're trading. Uh, generally, I find oscillators unreliable at best. <laughs> that was my answer. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, ADX is, ADX is uh, something that you, you could probably apply. Um, it gives you the strength of the trend. Okay, it doesn't really give you direction, so it'll give you the yeah. strength of a trend. But by the time that thing changes direction, the market's already moved 10%. Yeah. So, uh, again, play with the settings, check it out. It's not my favorite indicator. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I, I tried it a hundred different ways in my lazy system. I could never, it never improved my results. If anything, it, it detracted from no. them. A uh, couple of questions. Beat moving averages. <laughs> I know, that, 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 I'm with you. Moving averages, love them. So Luke's question is, why are 21 and 89 so significant? Uh, the Fibonacci numbers, it's just my preferred way of looking at the market. If you looked at 20 and 90, it wouldn't make much of a difference. <laughs> uh, the, the difference comes in when 
uh, you when you start looking at a 1020 exponential moving average crossover versus a 50 and a 200. Okay, so I just found 21 and 89 got me the most of the trend, but not only that, it gave me enough space to trade within the trend. In other words, I could get long trades in an uptrend with the 2189 holding the trend. Yeah. Whereas if I tried a 2050, I, I, the trend wasn't long enough for me to actually get trades to re-enter the trend. If that makes sense. Gotcha. Yeah, yep, like it. So Luke and Alan both broadly asking the same question. This, you know, where are we at this moment in this sort of top 14? I would say we are the sideways trading market. Alan says uh, currently looks like we might be moving to a downtrend, but still broadly within that sideways. Is that a fair comment, Warren? Uh, I consider the, the J200 is range bound. Yeah. In other words, it's not a trading market. Uh, it's not swinging. It's range bound. The volatility is keeping it within a range. Uh, and there's no defined swing. You can't measure it. Uh, the the all is really on uh, on the yeah you know, sort of acid at the moment. <laughs> so so we go and have coffee, in other words. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or well, uh, someone's okay, and the chirp came in, or maybe wine. Yeah, but wine, but be, wine for breakfast, man. I suppose they're grapes. So they're grapes. Ladies and gents, I'm not they're seeing grapes. any more questions coming through. Uh, people saying that this, the systems, yeah. So we'll look at trading. We'll look at trending systems over the next couple of months. Warren, really appreciate, as always, really great presentation. Ladies and gents, thanks for your time. Cheers, all. Thanks, Simon. Cheers, guys. Cheers, all. This webinar is proudly brought to you by IG South Africa. Visit igmarkets.co.za to open your trading account today.